G'day everyone. How the hell did Jake Paul win against Tyron Woodley? Why did he end up going to boxing? And why do you find him so damn frustrating? Jake is crazy in the media. He has grown up being on TV with viral YouTube videos, viral videos everywhere else. He's been on Disney. He's been crying from alcohol addictions. He's had breakups. He's done all this crazy stuff. And essentially there's, and then he's found his way into boxing and he's beating people, which is absolutely crazy and has been working his ass off. But how did he land there? How did he get to these positions and how did it all figure out? I'm going to tell you all of this in three methods. There's three different ways how to explain this. One is through obviously myth and philosophy and psychology. The second one I'm going to be talking about is brain science and how that actually works. And then the third one, I'm going to be talking about leadership theory, which is kind of explains like why you find him frustrating and like the position that they are in sort of like Spider-Man. Great power comes great responsibility. So guys, if you are interested or you haven't seen any of my stuff, I have a podcast and that you can be able to see that. It'll be linked here or here. You can watch the full episode of this there. This is just, I'm going through everything here to be entertaining for y'all. So you can watch um, one of those there. And please also like and subscribe if you like this video. That would help out so much. Or even just share, hit that share link, put on your Facebook. You're like, oh, this was interesting. Or Something like that, whatever, if you guys got any value from this. If you didn't, all good. So essentially, let's get into it. Oh, by the way, guys, I'm a, I am a, a, a pro fitness athlete. So I'm a professional fitness, fitness athlete. I compete in fitness competitions. And I also coach a lot of entrepreneurs and research all of the, how to optimize yourself physically, spiritually, and mentally. So I do an I do absolute boatload of that and learn about all this stuff. And I've been having a lot of conversations on this with my clients, with people, and I've been thinking about this and just having a lot of clicks, being like, oh my gosh, that's why Jake's doing all these things. So essentially, yes, the first one, I would like to share with you a quick story so we can understand Jake and like and Logan's development as to how they actually got into boxing and how they're actually winning and doing this stuff. Man, it's crazy. So there is three stories and I'll summarize them really quickly. The first one is mentioned by Jordan Peterson and a lot of this myth and psychology and philosophy stuff come out of the books, Joseph Campbell, Hero with a Thousand Faces, Man Had His Symbols, Carl Jung, The Origins and History of Consciousness by Eric Newman. Um, there was another Carl Jung book, I can't remember it right now, but Jordan Peterson talks about it a lot um, and also Wild at Heart, which is another uh, masculine book. As, as well. And King Warrior Magician Lover by Robert Moore, The King Within by Robert Moore, and The Hero Within by uh, Carol S. Pearson. So there's some, this is heavily researched, right? And eventually, uh, there's, so there's these stories, that the first story is the Mesopotamian king. And essentially, every single year, they drag the king out of the city into the dusty plains, and they whip, and they slash, and they bash him. And he has to claim every single thing that he did wrong as the leader. As, and the king, I didn't do this. I should have done this. I could have done these things. This is why I didn't do them. And I'm going to do this for next time. And essentially, the means of that is to, the whole means of it is, is humbling the king. When you, and I'm using the term king at the moment, a lot of people like to use different, because this is archetype stuff coming from out of these books. And if you're not sure what archetype stuff is, you're going to have to do a little bit of a research. But basically, it's certain characters within your own um, psychology and yourself, like how you act out. Like if you have a position where you have to talk to a whole bunch of people or inspire someone, that's probably your king coming out, your inner king. So we're just going to use king for now because I know a lot of people are a little bit uh, about it. So essentially, to your when your king is too much of a king, they get very demanding. They become like a tyrant. And someone who's an example of that, who's like right on the negative side of the example would be someone like Hitler, right? So he is someone who is like a, a mature king from what we've seen and what I know is someone who's like had their king developed and then they're just using it for the absolute worst. And that's a very extreme example. And then as someone is another example of an immature king, which is also known as the high chair tyrant is sort of the, the troubled child who is just like, I demand this. I want that. The spoiled child, the sport, but attention, attention, me, 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 help me out with this. And men do that a lot when they're in relationships and men do that a lot before they turn, you know, into the mature King. And there's a lot of different parts and situations and environments where we get to be mature and when we don't be mature, depending on where our psyche and our life has actually been developed, which is quite interesting. So that's one story is the Mesopotamian king. The other one is so they're bringing the king out and they're lashing him to humble him to bring him back so that he can be a good king. Buddha had the same story. 
Essentially, the story of Buddha was he lived in this palace and his dad didn't want him to ever leave or see anything bad so that he could become the best emperor ever. And he didn't even know what old age, sickness or death was. And it wasn't until he left the palace and he saw the slums and he was like, oh my gosh, he had like a full freak out moment and had to, like went back into the walls and like completely freaked out because he didn't know he was going to die. He didn't know he was going to get old or could ever possibly get sick. And he left the palace and lived among the slums. And then he ended up, I'm not sure if he went back or not, but he ended up going on a very big journey and he ended up finding a mountain and meditated on that mountain for a certain period of time and become enlightened. So he experienced both sides and then become the look, uh, the Buddha who was extremely enlightened and someone who was in a great position of influence. Obviously, thousand, 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 thousand years old and we still know the damn story. The third one would be a modern one, which is like Batman, right? So Batman, there's a real good comic book scene where, um, uh, or a cartoon scene where Batman's flying over Gotham City and he's Nightwing and he's got all these guns and he's shooting them all at the Joker and the Joker's laughing because all the bullets are missing him. The Joker pulls out a gun, spins the cartridge, puts a bullet in there, aims it at Batman while he's shooting, shoots one bullet, hits the Nightwing, the Nightwing comes crashing down and the Joker's just like laughing. And that's sort of to bring the king down when he gets all grandiose. And that's sort of like a parent's job uh, and a job role to do when obviously the kid's being too demanding or too much attention or bossing around and bah, 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 bah. And it's like, well, you can't get what you want all the time. And trying to educate and teach a kid through that is very extremely difficult, but that is working through and teaching them to develop into a mature king. And essentially, unconsciously, unless uh, there's, a, there's one more story I'd like to share and Jordan Peterson talks about a lot. And that is, is if there is a king who gets into a king position and they're in, and have been in a king position for a very long time and they're at the top and they're at the, the top of the hierarchy and they're there for ages and there's nothing to challenge them. There's no danger. There's nothing else. They get really bored and they'll burn the whole city down. They'll burn the whole palace down. And you'll see that in movies and stuff when there's like, you know, someone, some sort of king will just go evil and he'll just self-sabotage somehow. And essentially what this means through all the psychology and philosophy and myths sort of things is that we will unconsciously try to bring our own king down when we are way too grandiose and we get into to up with stuff. And essentially, if you look at Jake and Logan, and here we go, is Jake firstly calls himself the problem child. What? Isn't that just like the most specific example of the high chair tyrant possible? Like it's like... A I was like, oh my gosh, of course, of course. They make the biggest mind blown thing ever there. So essentially, they've had everything that they want. They've got financial freedom. They've got time freedom, locational freedom. They have the most power, influence, success, fame. Everything that a lot of people find like desirable in terms of materialistic type stuff, they've got it. They've got it all and they've been up there for ages. And they've had the, the episodes where they've been extremely emotional and been crying on, obviously, because everything's documented with them, but they've had like, addictions to stuff, alcohol addictions, and um, a whole bunch of just things happen to them where they've been extremely emotional of and, and been really down about as every single human like ever does. Um, but essentially, I think it's really good that they found boxing because that's just you versus someone else. Just bang, 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 bang. It's like you and one other person just getting into a ring and fighting each other. And there is so much respect for that because nothing else in terms of Success, power, money, whatever it is, doesn't matter when you get in the ring. It's just the effort you've put in, the effort they've put in, and you're punching someone in the face. But they're doing that to unconsciously get themselves to be humbled because in their position, they're sort of the boss of everything. They do everything. They can demand this. They get this. They want this. But when they get into a ring, that's not going to happen. But I am impressed that they both give a lot to charity. So in terms of like, you know, they've run very charitable events and do things for charity as much as possible. And I'm like, find that quite impressive. So that's why I find it very entertaining. Are they going to go down the dark route, especially Jake? Is he going to go down the dark or is he going to go down the light? Because he's in the media, he's doing stupid stuff, calling people names and bullying them around a little bit, which is like cheeky, but he's definitely in the trials and the tests of the hero's journey. So he's overcoming all these hurdles. He's trying to find himself as a man and where he actually fits and where does his masculinity like slot into stuff and like, Who's going to challenge him? How far can he push things before he actually gets humbled? So I really hope that he actually does get knocked out. Not for the sake, like in the future, obviously, like he, he beat um, Mr. Woodley. But hey, like he put himself in a really good position. I mean, if you obviously, if you fought him in an MMA, he's not going to win. But boxing sort of 
evens the playing fields a little bit. And yes, he has the best trainers in the world. And yes, he's working his absolute ass off. And yes, he has the confidence and everything to get in there and do it. I think it's a really good benefit for that Jake and Logan actually have is because they're in the media all the time, because they've been on stages all the time and because they're always in front of a camera and because they don't have any other stress, like the fights don't exactly mean anything to them because well, they, they do in terms of their own masculine development and like setting out their goals and being true for their words, but they don't need it for money. They don't need it for influence. They don't need it for anything else. And they don't actually like need it for, for to fill their own desires. Um, they're sort of doing it to challenge themselves because unconsciously they want to get hit. And I think it'd be good for them when they do really get hit and like knocked out and don't win because that'll force them to go even more into the sport, get more into their own minds and learn all the mindset stuff, learn all the crazy meditation stuff, learn everything that they are doing. Um, on a whole nother different ball game, which is going to push them further in the sport. And honestly, like if they do really well, I think it's going to be um, like really good for the sport, to be honest, and, and boxing. And it's like quite impressive that they're out there doing doing all those things. The second point is 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 dopamine, right? So they essentially, and like brain neurochemicals and stuff. So essentially because of their lifehood, their, their life and their childhood and everything is their brain has been experiencing some crazy emotions and some crazy things have happened within their own mind. And essentially what happens is if you're having all these crazy experiences, sensations, and like as much brain stimulus as they have is that their brain gets numb to it. So it needs to find all these different brain stimulus things. So that's why they've landed on something like boxing where essentially you got to plan for ages, you got to work really hard and you got to do all these different things. And if you win, it's just so ridiculously rewarding. So it's very interesting to see where they're going to go after this because in an Andrew Huberman Labs podcast, he talks about how to make sure that your brain doesn't get too addicted to dopamine is you're not going to celebrate every single win and these guys be out celebrating. So if they're winning all the time, I predict that they may get bored and may self-sabotage somehow, some way or another. If they do get knocked out, which is why they seek such crazy competition. It's why they seek all these next level fighters. Like it's nuts. Yes, they're working really hard and they've got all this confidence and they get to act out this. And obviously they're really good at acting because they've done it for so long and they can just act like really good fighters, put themselves like in a position, archetypically speaking, I need to learn all this stuff harder than anyone else. And they can and they will and they do, which is why they're actually succeeding really well with the boxing. So it's just like fantastic to watch. And like they're just, just manifesting everything, right? It's just crazy. The third thing is leadership theory. So obviously they're in positions of power and influence. And if they keep doing the charitable events and things like that, and they follow down that um, track of things, they can obviously be in a position for really good leaders to inspire and motivate a lot of other people to do the same and be better. But um, in terms of all the cheeky stuff that they do and like just a little bit of the self sabotage, little bit of the self sabotaging, but all the just <laughs> all the lighthearted bullying and all the other crazy stuff. It's sort of like, oh, frustrating because it is controversial, but it's not too controversial. But I believe if they don't get knocked within the next however many times, they may get more controversial and something bad may happen. But if they do, or if they do just fall in love with the sport in general, that and they keep going along their ways, that they could actually be real good examples for people in those in the future. So, um, which could be extremely interesting to watch as well. So what we do is we actually project ourselves because we always... You know, as leaders, leaders, they're telling people what to do. They have the power, they have the influence. So we project what we would do in their position. So like, would we put this post on? Would we do this thing? And every time that they do something that's a little bit out of the box or a little bit controversial, we'd be like, oh, would we do this? No, because a real good leader would do this. A real good leader would do that. But if we were actually in their position, their exact same position, live their whole lives up to where they are, is that we'd probably be doing exactly the same. However, it still doesn't change the fact that it's frustrating. And if it does frustrate you, it's allowed to frustrate you. You're allowed to be frustrated. You're allowed to go, oh, God damn, like, I think that's completely fine. But um, yeah, I think it's super interesting to watch. So if you guys like this video, if you're interested in this video, please hit a like, hit a, hit a subscribe. If you have any questions, chuck them in the comment but below. If you want to watch the full episode and listen to it, I have a podcast. You can just click here or here or somewhere around, around the screen right now and then you can listen to the full episode. And if you did like it, please share it on your story as well. That would be fantastic. But yeah, that's my little spiel on Jake and Logan Paul. I hope it made a lot of sense to you. I hope that you learned some cool things about myth and psychology, a little bit on brain science and a little bit on leadership theory there. And yeah, I'd love to see you guys in the next one. So let me know.